Hello and welcome everyone to my presentation. The topic of my talk is multi-scale modeling of ceramic matrix composites. I'm Ira Jain, co-head of department, ceramic composites and structures at German Aerospace Center in Stuttgart, Germany. In Stuttgart, we have an interdisciplinary team of material scientists, chemists, aerospace engineers, and computational engineers all working together towards the development, testing, and simulation of this particular material class. So what are ceramic matrix composites, or CMCs in short? So as the name suggests, they have ceramics in it, and we have ceramics in our daily lives. For example, some of you might be using a ceramic cup for your tea or coffee. And just imagine what happens if this cup falls down. There will be a mess all over of your tea or coffee, but we will also have some broken pieces of the cup. And they suggest that this ceramic cup is very brittle in nature. As soon as there is a small impact, it breaks into pieces. Although it has high temperature stability, and resistance to oxidation, corrosion, and abrasion, and so on. But this brittleness is nature of ceramic materials uh, somehow, somehow restricts its use in aerospace industry. And for this particular reason, we reinforce this material with fibers so that we can add a quasi-ductile nature to this brittle material class. Uh, as shown on the right-hand side of your screen, we see if we hammer a nail into a CMC component, the CMC component will not break like a monolithic ceramic after this particular impact. Indeed, it will the nail itself will go through the material and there will be only a local damage within the material and the entire component will remain intact. And this is something which we require from a component or from a material which is going to be used for any aerospace application. Here are some examples um, of CMCs. First example is carbon fiber embedded in carbon silicon carbide matrix. And uh, this material can be used for ceramic break disks where we have high temperatures because of friction between breaks and the break disk for a shorter duration of time. Uh, certain uh, similar uh, conditions are there in our nozzle as well where we have high temperatures for a shorter duration of time and we need such materials as CMCs. Another possible application or an application is uh, CMCs as thermal protection system for rockets re-entering the Earth atmosphere where we have high temperature of the surface of the rocket uh, or the front side of the rocket because of the resistance against the air and we can use CMCs for this application. Another example of CMC is uh, aluminum oxide, oxox, aluminum oxide fiber embedded in aluminum oxide matrix and uh, we can produce such oven racks where we can uh, place our samples on the oven racks and because of the high temperature stability, the, this, the, the rack itself would not deform with, with period of time or over a longer period duration of time. Another potential use of silicon carbide, oh, sorry, CMC in general is silicon carbide fiber embedded in silicon carbide matrix. Uh, industries such as G Aviation have been already using this components in their aero engines. In this manner, they can achieve higher efficiency with reduced weight and lower emissions. And the last but not the least example is then silicon, silicon carbide, monolithic ceramic. Um, it is indeed monolithic, but the way it's produced, it's produced by a 3D printing process, and we can add, we can create complex structure to reduce weight and end up with the anisotropic nature of the component. Here's a quick view about the damage tolerance mechanism which work behind uh, this materials, this material class. Uh, if we imagine if there's any cracks, crack which initiates within a monolithic ceramic, it goes through the material and that's why we see as soon as the material falls down, if your cup falls down, it will break into pieces. But if in the case of CMC, we have fibers within the matrix which means as soon as the crack initiates, it is then blocked by the fiber and the crack, instead of going through the material, it goes along the fiber. And in this manner, we slow down the crack elongation process and the damage to the material is then localized. And this crack deflection can happen at individual fiber, as we see in the case of fiber pullout, or the crack can go along the fiber bundle, which as we see in the block pullout. And the block pullout is the mechanism which is responsible for the material which we are going to discuss in this presentation. So the material which we are going to focus on is carbon fiber embedded in carbon silicon carbide matrix. 
just to give you a, a quick manufacture uh, view and in, uh, introduction to the manufacturing process of the material this is important because this is the motivation of our work what we want to end up with is a relationship of our manufacturing process with the performance or a component and if we have certain application we have to tune our process in such a way that we can deliver a material or tailor a material in such a manner that it's a perfect fit for the application and in this case we start with uh, infiltration of resin into the fiber preform and curing it to a certain temperature to end up with the CFRP. Then we perform a pyrolysis step at, uh, at temperatures about 1650 degrees Celsius under inert atmospheric conditions to end up with a carbon carbon material where it's very porous in nature. You can see these black lines are pore channels which are required in the next step where we introduce molten silicon to form silicon carbide matrix. So what we end up with uh, the final material, the final material itself is carbon fiber embedded in carbon matrix, a CC bundle. And then this CC bundle is then embedded in a silicon carbide matrix. And whenever the material is under thermomechanical load, we see a damage tolerant behavior, which is due to this block pullout, which we saw in the last slide. So what we need from our material is such a structure. And this block structure is dependent on the fiber matrix bonding. And the fiber matrix bonding, again, is dependent on the fiber and the resin I start with, right? So if I choose a fiber and a matrix which has low fiber matrix bonding, I will end up with a, I will end up with a microstructure which has pores distributed all over the matrix. As you see on the left-hand side of the screen, you have pores where the fiber detaches itself because of the low fiber matrix bonding, and we have pores inside the matrix. On the other side, if we have high fiber matrix bonding and uh, the fibers uh, are kept intact to the matrix because of the forces, then we end up with a, a block of carbon carbon, right? So we have a carbon carbon block where there are no pores within this block, but a the pore channels which we need for the further step, the siliconization step, as I showed in the previous slide. So this means we have a certain parameter in our hand which has a great influence on our microstructure and finally over the properties of my material. And since we have so many types of fibers and so many types of resins, it's difficult to try out everything and come up with a, a combination which gives us the highest fiber matrix highest fiber fiber matrix bonding in the end so in this for this particular reason we use multi scale modeling just to give you another insight into the next step for example if we have low fiber matrix bonding what happens is during the siliconization step uh, the silicon the molten silicon flows or reacts not only with the carbon matrix but also with the carbon fiber and this means in the end, we end up with fiber composite, but the property itself will not be as good as uh, any fiber composite because this particular material where even the fibers are siliconized or damaged by silicon, this will be very brittle in nature and as brittle as a monolithic ceramic. And in the case of high fiber matrix bonding, we'll end up with the desired microstructure where only the carbon matrix or the fiber on the edge of this CC blocks react with silicon to form silicon carbide and the CC bundle itself remains intact and it provides this damage tolerant behavior to our material. Now since we know that the fiber matrix bonding plays a major role in our microstructure and finally in the properties of our material, we can dig into the modeling and uh, try out different combinations. So in our preliminary study, we derive the properties, the thermoelastic properties of fiber and matrix. And uh, in the case of our preliminary study, we just took the interface properties. For example, for a strong interface, we took two gigapascal as the strength and 20 megapascal for our weak interface. And this is in comparison with the matrix strength, right? If uh, in this case, the weak interface, the interface strength is five times lower than the matrix strength. And uh, in strong interface, it is five times higher than the matrix interface. And we block the complete microstructure, which we have shown here, and uh, increase the temperature from 150 degrees Celsius to 600 degrees Celsius. 
Now what happens? As expected in the case of weak fibromatrix interface, the matrix detaches itself from the fiber as we can see in the central image. And in the case of a strong fibromatrix interface, the cracks are ex exclusively within the matrix. There are no cracks on the interface. So in this way, we could see that yeah, this model works and it produces results which we expect from a material with such different interfaces. And all of our parameters were fitted on this particular volume where we had uh, effectively one fiber embedded in matrix. And the mesh convergence study was performed at this scale as well since we have low number of elements and uh, due to time restrictions, we did all our parameter fitting on this particular volume. But to see the effects, of uh, the carbon-carbon block formation, we have to go to volume, which is then comparable with the SEM images. And for this particular reason, we have to have a tool in our hands so that we can compare the SEM image with our simulation results. And for this reason, we have written a Python script which detects the cracks in the matrix and then gives us a plot or the distribution of cracks with their sizes. And this technique is used uh, there are, there are commercial softwares available as well, but we use this technique for detection of fibers and then to detect circulatory fibers and so on. And this technique can then be transferred to 3D analysis as well, where we have a 3D stack of images. images. So now if you see or compare the SEM image of a weak fiber matrix interface, we can see there are cracks, the black, uh, the black, areas which you see here on the on the screen are the cracks and uh, they are in the region of one, one micrometer square, right? And uh, when we compare the simulation results with this particular SEM image, we can see even here the cracks are present on the fiber matrix interface and the amount of cracks which are present in this particular microstructure are comparable with the SEM image. What happens if we go to a material with strong fiber matrix interface? Here we can see there are no cracks or almost no cracks present in the matrix. As you remember from the previous slide, in the carbon-carbon bundle, there are no cracks. The cracks are along the carbon bundles. These are the pore channels where the silicon or the fluid silicon fills up the uh, holes to react with carbon in the end. But, and when we compare the simulation results with that, uh, we still see these small cracks. And the reason behind that is the volume which we are considering right now is still very small when compared to the carbon bundles which we which we saw in the SEM images. And even in the analysis, we can see there are 350 small cracks. And for this particular reason, we decided to go to a volume where we have more number of fibers. And apart from that, we wanted to add one more feature to the properties of the material. In this case, we added a viable distribution to our matrix strength. In the earlier cases, what we did was we took a particular value, for example, 100 megapascal as our matrix strength. And this property was used at all the nodes, right? But in our material, we know in ceramic, we don't have the same strength at each and every point. There are some defects and that's why we have certain points where the strength is higher and we have certain locations where the strength is lower. And to introduce this effect into our material model, uh, we have this functionality in multi-mechanics where you can insert or give your fiber parameters as input and the software distributes the strength in your matrix based on this particular function which you enter as an input. So now what we have is we have a matrix with all the nodes having different strength properties based on this particular function which we gave as an input. Now when we compare the results, uh, now we have a bigger volume but still without viable modulus we still see there are small cracks present in the matrix, about 360 cracks in the region of 2.5 square micrometer square. And as soon as we introduce the effect of fiber modulus, we see a, ten, a trend towards the block formation which we are expecting from our material. For example, what we are seeing here is that the small cracks are coming together to form a larger crack. And this is evident from the statistics as well. If we see here, the number of small cracks has reduced from 360 to 326. And as you see, there are a couple of cracks which are which have a larger area when compared to the model without viable modulus. So this means there's a trend towards the formation of 
these carbon carbon blocks which we which we desire for our microstructure and this means with this information we can then go into other uh, manufacturing parameters for example uh, fiber volume content now the images which we showed earlier were with fiber volume content of 40 percent what happens if i take a material with higher volume fiber volume content now in the other case now it's 60 percent and as we can see there are almost no cracks or even when there are cracks they are present within the matrix but there are no big cracks and the reason behind that is since i increase my fiber volume content the matrix volume content decreased and there is no space for cracks to come together and grow into a larger crack uh, and this leads to conclusion that i need not try another combination i mean or maybe even the same combination but different fiber volume content to see where do i end up with uh, i can do it virtually i can test uh, which fiber volume content is optimum for this carbon carbon block formation and then go into the manufacturing process and then try it out so in this manner uh, we come back to our process structure property performance relationship where we said that we want to establish a relationship between process where we have manufacturing parameters for example fiber matrix and the pyrolysis temperature and so on and when we end up with a structure so this is the area where we uh, we model everything right now we started with some process parameters and we ended up with a structure and in the next step what we end up with is with if we take this structure and apply a certain thermomechanical load to this particular structure we end up with a performance and with the help of multi-mechanics what we can do is if you want to simulate any component at a macro level let's say this nozzle instead of adding properties to that particular model what we can use we can directly use these microstructures and use as properties since we have cracks and everything in this particular material in, or in this particular microstructure it will directly influence the performance of our material and as soon as we have established this chain of process structure properties and performance and validated it i can go back and if someone tells me i need a material with such requirements i can go back into the process and tune my parameters my process parameter in such a manner that i get the best possible material for any required application so to summarize my work uh, i introduce cmcs to you guys <coughs> excuse me who are not known to this world where we can replace the high temperature metals or where the metals reach their limit we can use cmcs and we developed a fem based approach where we can model cracks during pyrolysis and with the help of cohesive zone elements we can compare those results with sem images the parameter with the help of parameter variation uh, we can try out certain combinations virtually and then if we are fine with the combination we can go into manufacturing process and try it out if if the model can be validated or not and in the end we can integrate all these micro models for a multi-scale simulation where we can use the properties direct from micro model to uh, predict the performance of my material in the end so this was from my side thanks for thank you very much for your time and i'll be glad to take some questions